Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. Hi there, I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a podcast where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and tell me things. Very Delta is for the lady who gets her nails done exclusively for hand jobs. <laughs> We have an extraordinary guest coming out later, but we need to cover a few things that are very Delta. So let's get into today. I've recently been shopping and getting targeted ads, and I'm seeing the word size inclusive being thrown around, and it seems like some people need to understand better what that means. Uh, so first of all, the, the targeted ads that come to me, you know, I, I, I can sometimes think that I am a conspiracy theorist, so I think my phone is listening to me. But I also know that in reality, while there probably is some portion of the government that is listening to certain people for certain reasons, I do feel like, uh, you know, it's just a, a matter of sort of like what your search words were and what zip code you live in and what you most likely might be looking for based on the coupons that you've recently used. I get it. Like, it's probably a lot simpler. Uh, on a bigger scale, it's probably a lot simpler than... Uh, you know, the government is is trying to see what you're really doing at Target. It's just, you know, a think tank is wants to see who's buying what at Target. So, you know, I, I, I do understand that and I do appreciate that. However, I feel like because I've purchased stuff online, specifically through Instagram, and I know better, but I've done it anyway because I'll see something and I'm like, well, maybe it's good. Like maybe this one's going to be the one that's going to be a little bit different. And it's not. There, there isn't one. It just doesn't happen. Uh, I feel like there's like four or five companies maybe that operate and, and say like, we are the plus size uh, option that you've been looking for. Um, and they're not. They never are. Uh, you know, you, there's an old saying that, uh, well, I don't really even know what the old saying is, but it, it basically a lot of old sayings are essentially, if you do the same thing over and over and you expect a different result, you're insane. And I, so I am clinically, technically insane uh, because I, I think I'm going to find something wonderful. Um, you know, I see that number, like I, I look at something that says we carry plus and then it says three X and I'm like, that's me. That's me. That's the one. But there's not really a universal like number or universal thing that everyone is really subscribing to the way that I would think that they would. Um, you know, for the most part, when you see the number 3X in plus size clothing, it generally means a women's, as they say, you, they use the term women's, dress size 22 slash 24. That is where I would fall in the category. Whereas someone, you know, like a friend, like Morgan McMichaels might fall into the size 12 category. Um, and that would not, you know, for some places not be considered plus other places, it would be considered plus. But what I don't understand is these places that don't clearly say, uh, or don't clearly adhere to it because they'll say that in their size chart, this is your measurement and you'll read the measurement because you have to read the measurement. And I always read the measurement and, it, and I'm like, Oh, I fall within that, that, that looks about right. Or I'm going to push the limits on that one, but it's just going to be for this way or that way. I end up getting these things and they are so fucked up. The sizes are so off. There is, they're not adhering to this. You have to really go to companies that are specifically set forth for the plus size shopper. So you can go in and try these things on. Cause some of this stuff you try, you know, you're not going to try it on and they know you're not going to, you're not going to send it back because of the hassle in sending it back to like a foreign country, especially in the time that we're living in now, uh, you know, you end up spending more money. So you have to be so careful with that. You have really have to go in and you have to go to Montgomery Ward or you have to go to Sears or wherever it is that you shop for all of your back to school 
clothing. Um, you have to try those things on because, you know, some of you, myself included, are husky. And maybe you need to get the husky or the slim fit. Um, and if you are in that plus size section, you know, things in your body move around a little bit. So that like equator across the middle, you have to decide, you know, just, are the pants going over or are the pants going under? You, that's a choice you have to make for yourself. And, um, you know, I like everything covered for the most part. Um, I am seeing too, though, a lot of these creators, uh, plus size creators on like TikTok and different places, sort of not happy with the options that are being offered. They, uh, a lot of people keep saying like on the uh, Torrid or Lane Bryant, uh, uh, Ashley Stewart, places like that. They're, they critique them for offering too many, um, cold shoulder cutouts like that's the only sexy part on a woman's body is like cold shoulder is what they think that the companies think and they're tired of seeing those so I suggest I don't know I don't have a problem with a cold shoulder cutout I think it can be very nicely done I don't think it goes in every outfit but you know I certainly think a cold shoulder cutout is better in uh, something for a cocktail party than a cold crotch shut out a cutout I think it's better than a cold crotch cutout I wouldn't want that would you want that I mean, maybe you would, depending upon the cocktail party, cocktail party. But, um, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with a nice cold shoulder cutout. I think there's more things we can complain about. Um, I do think that plus size clothing might not all need to center around um, Disney characters. I think sometimes maybe that's kind of a reach, especially when it's not like licensed or, uh, you know, it's just like suggesting sort of character Disney-esque characters. I think that's a little... You know, I feel like plus size clothing companies and stores need to have certain things year round. Why is there not a black dress, black cocktail dresses year round at Lane Bryant? Why does that happen? I know somebody that used to work at Lane Bryant in management, and they said that the reason that they sell their clothing with short sleeves or no sleeves at all is because they like to keep on a tea stand next to it little sweaters. So you have to buy two items because a lot of people that are plus size, not all, and I'm not saying you should be, but there are many people who are plus size that are bothered by their arms and the way that their arms are not toned. Um, and so they want to wear a long sleeve something. And these companies, uh, they don't like that. So they want you to have to buy another item. So they're playing on your, you know, your fears, the, the things that you're scared of, they play on it. Um, I mean, which is not a surprise. I mean, that's marketing. Obviously, that's business. But these companies need to come out with a black. Doesn't everyone need a, a little black dress for everything? I'm talking men, women. Everyone needs a little black something. I, I do. I mean, it's not little, but it's black. Oh, you could have a big black dress. I think a big black dress is perfect. Or it could be a trapeze or it could be a big black suit. Everyone needs something simple and black for everything. Everything that you go to, every event, we all need something just black. I think that works for everyone and everything. Yeah. You know, a lot of these companies are just, they're, they're, they're failing the assignment that's being handed to them. Really, honestly. I know Lane Bryant is doing wonderful things with their bras, the back smoothing balconette. I think if you are a plus queen, go get yourself a back smoothing balconette right now. It is the bra. Don't get a balconette. Get a back smoothing balconette. You're going to see how important it is in the back. You're going to feel collected. You're going to feel like the lady. You're going to feel like she who is when you're sitting up at attention. And from all sides, you just feel wonderful and supported. Everyone should have support. Go to Lane Bryant. They are really here to support you. What they're not here for, though, is um, their accessories. I miss the bangles. We need proportionate bangles. I love I love wearing bangles, and they're hard to find sometimes. I don't have the biggest wrists, but I want bigger shaped bangles. They're missing the mark on that. What I used to be able to find so much was belts. I know a lot of people think plus size people don't necessarily need belts, but belts are so important as an accessory. I think it's just so nice to sort of gather everything in, find the smallest part here, maybe float it out. You can wear it skin tight. If you want to wear a bodysuit and you want all your shit hanging out, I say go for it. Wear what makes you feel great and glamorous and lovely. Uh, maybe you don't want to feel great, glamorous and lovely. Maybe you want to feel like a skank. Maybe you want to feel like a slut. You know, the, the season is upon us. Halloween is coming. Uh, people are going to be dressed that way. And I say go for it. If you want to be a skank and a slutty bitch, fucking do it. Who's going to tell you no? Not me.
If you're a size queen, you're going to enjoy today's extra special guest. Our guest is Daddy from Hey Queen. We have the one and only Johnny McGovern here. Let's take a quick break and then we'll get into it with Johnny. Welcome back, friends. I'm excited to get into this interview with this queen because we go way, way back from kikiing everywhere to watching them flourish as the host of Hey Queen. I'm so excited to welcome my friend Johnny McGovern. Hi, Johnny. Welcome. Hey, Queen. Very Delta. (laughs) Yay. I'm so thrilled to be here. You know, the thing is, you, I mean, I've always wanted to be, you know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a newscaster. Uh And then I wanted to be like a a roving reporter. Mm. But it wasn't until I was on Hey, Queen where I realized, like, it could maybe someday be an option in some capacity. So you really planted the seed for this. Because I'm a very Delta, very that dedicated watcher and listener. Yeah. And you plant seeds. Well, what can I do? All I can do is inspire the world, Delta. What can I do? It's a small thing. Sow the gay seeds. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we go go back uh, not just, uh, well, exclusively, especially because of Hey Queen, but also... Uh, our love of Lady Red. Definitely. Uh, we were connected with that because I knew Red um, prior to working on, with, prior to Red being on Hey Queen with you. And yeah. then we all sort of connected just at Hey Queen. But, you know, Red was just somebody who um, didn't just connect us then, but still connects us now, even though she's not here in this form. That's right. You know what I mean? Her spirit is all over the place. It really is. And definitely people still write me every day talking about how much they miss her. And, of course, I miss her. And her legacy is there for hundreds of episodes of TV. I mean, so many times we lose people and they're gone and no one in the future will know how great that person was. But Lady Red, she's there in her purest form forever. So that's that brings a little bit of comfort, you know? Yeah, and I think it was amazing that we got to see um, Red in that book. The drag yes. book that just came yes. out recently, yeah, of of drag legends and 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 also uh, was it, what was the mag Harper's Bazaar, yeah, cover of Harper's Bazaar. And she got to enjoy that while yeah. she was alive. That came out and that was precursor to the book. So she right. did get that. You know, I wrote a song about her called you know Flowers because I really after she passed there was just such an outpouring of love from so many people. And I know she was still struggling in real life. You know, right. it's not easy to be an independent drag performer. It's not like Hey Queen was on NBC. So we were just, we were rich. She was still struggling in a lot of ways. So it was hard to see like, you know, so much, so many people giving her all the attention that she deserved when she had just been there a couple of weeks before, like, right. you know, wondering like, Oh, I would have to do this job or I have to do this to pay the rent, you know? Mm-hmm. So, it was nice that she got those flowers before right. she passed. And I love the fact that, you know, one of the songs I grew up with uh, <clears throat> as a gay kid was uh, Nothing Going On But The Rent. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's interesting to watch now uh, young new performers new to the scene that are that are excited to hear other drag entertainers' songs. And I have seen so many perform Nothing Going On But The Rent. <laughs> Version by Lady Red. Yes, I mean, uh, it's like in that way, there's just so many ways you look at something, and you're like, that person's still here. Yeah. This is still here. This legacy lasts. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. You know, she and I were really creative partners. I kind of was like her creative director in a lot of ways because sure. I would be always motivating her, being like, we got to record an album, we got to do a single for you. And, that was my idea to do that uh, that song and, like, you know, her vocals on that just right. fit. Right. And, of course, Adam Joseph produced it. So it's great that that album's there and all of the Hey Queen legacy is still there for people to discover her all over again, you know? Yeah, for sure. All of it. How did you to, um, like, really get your momentum going with Hey Queen? How, like, when did you start Hey Queen and then get your momentum with Red? Uh, well, I met Lady Red at Hamburger Mary's at a mm-hmm. Calpurnia show when she was doing one of those gospel numbers yep. where she would exit out on one side and the audience would think it's over and then she would run around the back and then appear out of the other one. Right. And I fell in love immediately. Um, I wrote her a song that we did together and we just started to become friends. She was on the Dickmatized video. Yep. 
And then when I got the offer to do Hey Queen, I was trying to just conceptualize, like, what will this be? Like, well, originally I thought it'd be like Charlie Rose, like uh, just me and a guest facing each other. And I would say, hey, Queen. And they'd say, hey, Queen. And that would be it. When right. then I thought of the idea of Lady Red kind of there for me to chat with in the beginning and then as a presence there for the whole show, that kind of really solidified how I wanted the show to go. And it was the right. basis of what made the show work right. for so many years is our chemistry. And it wasn't like you were just coming into a random place with just me. Like there was sort of both of our histories, both of our legacies and the vibe that you came into sort of our world, our hate queen world. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we just started doing it, you know, in front of, in front of some screens at a studio where they were doing a lot of different shows. Right. And, uh, you know, luckily RuPaul and Calpurnia were the first guests. Right. And that was at a very rare time when you could still just email RuPaul and be like, hey, do you want to do this? And he was like, yeah, sure, be there. Right. <laughs> it's very different now, obviously. Yeah, and I mean, now we're in, like, what, 15 seasons of, of Drag Race, you know, one on every city. I yeah. mean, it's like Starbucks. Yes. It's, it's everywhere. But... uh Hey Queen is a place where people sort of get to tie up loose ends, I think. I feel mm. like it's a place where you get to go and talk about things that you didn't get to talk about on Drag Race or things that happened to you after. Um, it's it's such a magical, there's such there's just like a library that people can look at of that. I mean, that you've made such a profound effect, don't you think? It definitely, the library of Hey Queen is really, is rich. Mm -hmm. And it happened at a time that, I don't honestly know if that time is possible anymore, where there wasn't that many outlets for the queens to go to at tell all. their full story None. beyond what was in the edit. And also, obviously, Hey Queen wasn't just Drag Race. It was other LGBTQ people. But for me, the whole thing was important to have gay people, queer people, trans people tell their stories, right? you know, and, and have that on record forever. And especially for the drag race girls, getting something, your story on record was important when they, when the show wasn't as big and they could just talk to entertainment weekly, right? the night, right. the night of the show airing, that was the only place. And so we had many years of like a lot of access to, you know, all the girls. Well, and that was the beautiful thing is because it was a, it's a safe place. Everyone felt comfortable going in and saying, uh, there's going to be queer control over this, mm -hmm. but it's also more, um, it's friends. It's yeah. friends that are like, I'm not going to shit on you. I'm not going to make you look like an idiot. And I mean, I've been on your show several times and there was always this understanding like, I, you brought me in and said, we can talk about whatever you want and whatever you don't want to talk about, we don't have to. If you want to tell me to fuck off, tell me to fuck off. Like, right. You were always that way about it. And that's why I think people were more willing to open up because they were like, I know this is not going to get twisted. I know you're letting me tell my truth. Yeah, I mean, I think between me, who even if someone didn't know me personally, they knew my work and my music videos and Big A Sketch Show, and a lot of the girls knew Lady Red from working together for so long. So yeah, it did end up being ideally a safe space where someone could tell their truth. They could call me later and be like, please take that out. And I can t I did the entire edit of the show for the right. entire time right? because I didn't think some random straight editor was going to be able to understand what was important when, to you know, Tempest DuJour was telling us about her car crash or Kasha Davis was telling us about when she was drinking or what in fight was important that somebody wanted to clear up. So that made it a lot more work, but it definitely right. made, I think, the, the legacy of the show clearer because it really was someone who cared about all the guests knew a lot about them controlling the edit on the whole thing yeah for sure when you got here earlier i you gave me a big hug and i could smell your fragrance mm. it smells so 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 good honey i put on an extra couple spritz because i said i want delta to smell this i, I wanted could. to know I and could. after i left i wanted to go oh it still smells like johnny so rich. You I am smells... a fragrance queen. Yeah. I love fragrance. And this is one I bought when I was on the road with Dita Von Tees this last year. And I would, no one can smell me during the show because these are huge theaters that we're playing. Right. But for me, it gets me in the mood. And I feel like I'm, you know, I'm wearing a tux with a rhinestone flower and I'm looking my absolute best. And t -t -t a couple spritzes makes me yeah. feel. It get, makes me feel my fantasy. I can't, can't, I, can't a big hairy man feel his fantasy? It, yes, I mean, I it feels so good. It smells so good. It, may, it just it puts you in a in a mindset. Yeah. Especially with that kind of tour. You know, we just had Eddie Debar here. Yes. Um, we've had Natasha Estrada here. 
who've worked in that same kind of tour. Yeah. Um, you've done that tour as as the host uh, many times. Yeah, for yeah. For a long we've time done now. like five tours now. That's a ton. And Eddie's been on every single one of them. I love Eddie. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that, about about oh, what those tours. Such a great gig. I mean, Dita came on Hey Queen, and we got along really well. And I really thought that was it. And one day she emailed me or Instagrammed me and was like, hey, do you want to host my tour? Like, it was no big deal. And I was like, do I ever? And, uh, you know, Dita has built up a huge audience right. who of dedicated fans. And really what she does on stage is the most glamorous, the highest level Absolutely. of burlesque where, like, every, you know, crystal on the side of the the props are hand done. Her, right. you know, Mr. Pearl's doing the corsets. Louboutin's doing the shoes. I mean, I got a, I got a pair of Louboutin's crystal from the Atelier from, from D. Fierce. Yeah. And we traveled. We traveled all around the States. Uh, the UK, Australia, Europe, and it's just incredible. She lets me perform songs, then I host the whole show, and we perform at some of the most incredible venues, stay in fancy hotels. It's As like going should. on vacation. As you should. Because now that you, you must know this, when we get flown everywhere to do shows, <laughs> you're now used to traveling on somebody else's dime. And so now the thought of a vacation that I would pay for myself, outrageous. Right. So it's kind of like a vacation. You get to see the world in the, the most lovely way you possibly could. Full of adoring fans. It's really, yeah. really beautiful. Well, I mean, this is it's what you do. I mean, this is I, you were built for that. I mean, you obviously, you can sit behind a desk and do this, which is, you know, this is... I keep looking at you and I keep thinking about you. And this really, I, I, I keep going back in my mind to the fact that it's weird to be here and you there and vice versa. Because really, Johnny, you were the person that made me realize I could have something like this and do something like this. Yes, in another way, it was facilitated, but it was you really who planted that seed. And so now when I hear you talk about traveling and, and hosting something, it's like, Maybe that's an option. Maybe that's an opportunity in another way. You really do inspire a lot of people that without knowing that you're trying, you're not trying to do that. You just do it. You just do it. I really mean that. Well, I'm happy to have inspired you to this because you are great at it. And I it's love fun. listening to you. I really do. From the very first episode of Very That to this first episode of Very Delta, I am a huge fan. I love the show because we're so, we are of sort of the same generation. Right. We also were working in nightlife before real showbiz called. Right. And those relationships that you build with your friends from that era, you've really held on to. And the same for me. I'm still doing creative projects with the people that I right. met in nightlife 20 years ago today. And that, you know, obviously in inspired me to do Hey Queen was all those influences from the ballroom scene, New York nightlife, and, you know, go-go dancers, drag queens, all that was inspired by my time in nightlife. It's so wild, the where, where we can go and where we, we continue to go. Yeah. 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 Let's take a break. Okay. Okay. It's so What are these fragrances? Well, these Which ones are these. Are these representative we're right, of all things Delta? Well, we're right back. We're back from. I'm sorry, we're, back, we're back. No, we're fine. No, because we were talking about fragrance and about how good Johnny smelled. Mm. Um, these, okay, so this is maybe this is like TMI or maybe this is kind of ridiculous, but I picked out these ones specifically for your interview because I usually oh, change them for the person. Fabulous. So I was like, <laughs> this is going to sound very overthinking but that's what i do best is overthink and then get no result uh, these to me seemed tall and oh, robust well those two things i am so this was like one of the well, these are these two were the largest quote male fragrance uh -huh. that i had and i just felt like they were tall they were you know i always think of you like this like mm. a v you know what <laughs> i mean like big shoulders and you just narrow down and they, these reminded me of that and they reminded me of what you might smell mm. like and i was fucking wrong because you smell even warmer these are crispy mm. you smell warmer yeah, i'm a gourmand oh, queen God. i love like angel for men but angel for men 
Havana. Oh, I have all of the the, mm. the different variants. Oh, they're so good. I, I've I've gone on eBay and gotten like one of those little sample kits where you get every single version of to. the Lady Angels, the Men Angels. Oh my just god! Because I fucking love it. During quarantine, I was slathering myself in angel products yeah. to soothe myself. Right. Because angel, Lady Angels, not something I would necessarily wear uh-huh. out. Because it's very overpowering, but it did remind me of Lady Red because mm-hmm. she loved that. Right. And I, so, uh, another best friend of mine who's also passed now, she also wore that. Mm. So it's a fragrance that I love to smell right. when I'm alone on, on myself. So I would wear it and spritz it around the house. And of course, the Angel for Men Havana is really good. It's so, I mean, it's rich on the next level, but it's not overwhelming. No. And no. I used to smoke cigarettes, I don't anymore. And when you smoke cigarettes, you could put a few spritz because there's a little tobacco in it. Right. So you wouldn't smell like cigarettes. You just smell like your your cologne with a few notes of tobacco. This is the <laughs> truth. What Johnny McGovern is saying is the truth. There is ways around that and ways that like certain fragrances will work with whatever uh, natural scent you have or yeah. whatever you're, you know, maybe you're fighting something, like you said, cigarette smoke. I mean, it does, um, it really does. Tell me about mm. the... The Go-Go's. Tell me Uh, about what you've been working on. Go-Go for the gold. Go-Go for the gold is a reality competition show. Just finished the last season. Just finished up uh, about a month ago. It's for Out TV. And it's a competition show for Go-Go Boys. You know, I started working in nightlife 20 years ago. And every one of my parties that I threw in New York and the few that I threw here really were centered around the go-go boy as the star. Uh And so I met go-go boys over the years who, and obviously we had the lap dancers on Hey Queen who were all my very good friends because we were working together in the club all the time. And I met so many who I'm like, wow, that person is a star. Sure. Maybe they're not great at reading lines or maybe they're not a singer or whatever, but whatever they have, they have presence. Uh They can get on the box and draw the entire room in. They can make customers feel special. They just radiate. And so Greg McKeon and I, who's one of my close friends and a a go-go superstar, um, many years ago thought about a show when we were throwing a party at FUBAR that had like just every guy we were working with was a superstar. Right. And we sort of imagined something in the vein of Drag Race that was for go-go's. But at that time, there was no place for that. It seemed too expensive. Everybody was kind of like, sounds like great, but we don't know. It was like Logo was the only game in town. So 10 years later, after doing uh, Hey Queen without TV for like eight seasons, they heard about the idea, and then they made it happen in real life. And so, yeah, we cast 12 Go-Go boys and put them through the paces. They're judged by the Go-Go gods, who are all, you know, Teddy Bear, Greg McKeon, Adrian Hart, and JoJo Guads, who have all have their own Go-Go experiences. And we put them through their paces when it came to challenges that encompass some of the things you had to do as a Go-Go boy, whether it's just straight-up Go-Going or performing on a tiny box because that's the stage that you have to be sexy on or performing for a tipping audience that is strange. In the first season, it was old people. They had to do a twerk routine for old people. Right, right. Um, Or being a spokesmodel or a representative of a brand. So really the whole, you know, go-go boys now are their own type of celebrities with social media. So it seemed like the time was really right. And whereas drag, drag race has just mined to the to the deepest diamonds that have been had in the drag world. And they luckily continue to flourish. The go-go boys have been watching that for the last like 14 years and wanting a little piece of it because they're right. sort of the all the other side of the coin for entertainment in nightclubs. Uh-huh. So when we got them on set, there was fireworks because these guys really want They want that spotlight and they're ready to turn it. So it's been fun. And we just actually uh, got greenlit for season two. So So great. We are getting ready to, as you see this, we'll probably be casting and getting ready to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really exciting. And um, I needed to do something different and fresh after uh, we did one last season of Hey Queen after Lady Red passed Mm -hmm. because we owed the network 26 episodes and we had to get it done. Right. And it ended up being extremely cathartic because we talked about her a lot and had guests were able to share about her. But, you know, with the combination of that 
her being gone, and a lot of the times I kept Tay Queen going because I wanted to make sure Lady Red was okay, had a way to get attention, get gigs, do other stuff. And, you know, uh, drag race contracts are much more strict. It's not yes. like I can just call people up now and have them come on. There's a lot more control. Right. So Hey Queen is a little less immediate than it was before, where I could pretty much call anybody up and be like, you want to come on? And sure. they can do it. Sure. Now we're competing with Entertainment Weekly, <laughs> Entertainment Tonight to talk to them. And they, you know, the people on All Stars, like Raj or whatever, they're calling Entertainment Weekly like the night the show airs. Right. So I felt like it was the time to reinvent and find something that could be a new legacy and also that had tons of talent and also an important thing on the show for me was not just to have 12 like muscle head guys but to show all the different varieties the of people part. that are sexy so we had a guy like a skinny twink in heels we had a trans man we had bears we had jocks we had we had a whole variety of guys who were sexy and really none of the competition was judging on body that was important for me it was about performance mm -hmm. it wasn't like we were like well you didn't look good none of the judge that never came out of anybody's mouth it was really about these people and their star quality and how they were able to handle the challenges and how they managed to rise to the top i mean that's what's important about the show itself is that is that not just um are we able to see something like so we would we would always see go-go dancers in clubs, right? And they would always, in the past, be considered the color in the club, the, the, the decoration. But this is somewhere where we can see highlighted the actual talent and all the work that goes into this and the cultivation of a personality that goes with what, what kind of entertainer each one is. That's what's so important. And it adds to this conversation and allows for the conversation of what is sexy? Who yeah. is sexy? Why is that sexy? And and how, you know, fortunately that we're living in a time where we don't have to explain why we're attracted to something or why that's what you want forever or or why you want that just for tonight. Like you can have multiple things that, that you find sexy or you find attractive. And the show really does highlight that not just these, that there's entertainment, but it really showcases that how many different personalities are really out there entertaining. Yeah. There's so many different people involved yeah. in nightlife. So much star quality. With so many stories. Yeah, exactly. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so you can watch the entire season right now on OutTV uh, at OutTV.com or they actually have an app through Apple TV. So okay. you can just go go on the OutTV app. I think it's like you know $2.99 a month. So you can get the entire series right have now. Have you ever go-go danced? No, no. What? Definitely if you had not. to go go if you did have to go go dance what would be what would be is like oh, to be something you would wear or scary and scary I do maybe I do a lumberjack look I mean cuz I've got that going for me but you know I I did dance around on stage in the gay pimp era right you know that was really why i started working with go-go boys in the first place because i had backup dancers but well, we were talking too many body dysmorphia issues to do go-go dancing but i I'm did still tell working you. through them all well we all are all the time i mean yeah, i think that's exactly. just, but but what but what i when you got here i was saying i was talking about this uh instagram account called it's called like hot victorians or mm, something like that mm -hmm. and i always think you look like you're from another time like even though you're modern and you're dressed modern and and all of that i always think of you in like sort of a victorian frame right in your face because you look mm. so distinguished mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and because you're so tall i've never been a tall mm. person so i always admire tall people mm. i yeah. they loved casting me in checkoff plays when i was in acting school i bet <laughs> I, I was bet. always like i want to be the young star why am i playing someone's uncle but luckily i've grown into being an old hairy uncle and now that that younger men find that attractive so they i do. love that yeah, they do well God. you could be that could be your go go dance mm. aesthetic yeah yes like Bad. you could be like i don't know Edgar Allan Poe or something like go go dance. <laughs> yeah. Edgar, like, Edgar Allan Ho. Edgar Allan Ho. That is you. That would uh -huh. be perfect. Yeah. That would be perfect. Um, uh, uh, you know, I'll consider it. I'll talk. You'll think I'm about better it. behind the scenes for go go dancing. I'm better being like, good job, go go's. Do you strip in Dita's shows? <laughs> Just a little bit. When things go wrong, you know, with the Dita show, the real job is that you have to fill the time while they change all the big sets. Mm -hmm. And so there's a red light and a green light. And so if the red light is still on, it means keep talking. Right. 
And there were several times where like the lipstick that she rides and one thing wasn't working or something happened. There was a spill when they're filling up her glass and the red light is just continuing oh, to stay fuck. on. And I'm there with like 3,500 people just right. staring at me and I have material then I have backup material and then there's like, Oh shit material. So there was a point when I started to like do like a strip tease where I'm like, da -na 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 -na, showing my socks, giving the thing, showing the hairy shoulders, doing what I got to do. I'll do whatever I have to do for show business. Yeah, though, you will. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Let's take a break. That's so funny. I I do, do love designer. Posters. Yeah, if you like, you'll love. Mm -hmm. Primo. We are back with <laughs> we are back with John. You remember Primo? Primo. If you like some I Giorgio, can't if you like Giorgio, you'll love Primo. And Lady Red and I used to hunt for what Morgan McMichael's wears, which is if you love Angel, you'll love I Cherub. Forget, cherub is Cherub. <laughs> it's something cherub. like I always remember that. You'll love Cloud Demon or whatever. Right. Cloud Demon. Cloud <laughs> <laughs> that is Morgan. She is a Cloud Demon for sure. So I love a good. I love a good fake fragrance. It's like those that when the names come out for the Halloween costumes that mm. are like, you know, funny names. Oh yeah, when they're ripoffs and they yeah. have to name it something like Camp Camp Ground Murderer because they can't use Jason. Right. Because they exactly. can't get that copyright. Mm -hmm. It's always like that. Well this is a segment of the podcast that we like to call the annals of the inbox or the annals. Oh, I'm familiar. You know. Um, I love to read these letters from listeners, respond to them on the podcast. So we're going to continue to do that each week here on the show, even though Raj is not here, because people are writing letters to readmedelta at gmail.com, and they're sending them knowing that they're going to have a guest here. So Johnny is mm -hmm. going to help me answer some of okay, these. Okay, we're going to fill in um, We're going to fill in Johnny's name over the Raja name, and we know that's we know. not what you wanted, but I'm here now. No, they want it. Now look at I have this brand new oh letter oh. opener from my friend Big D from oh Long my Beach. Oh god, how fabulous. And she had it engraved to say read me Delta. And then on the back it says because we always used to go up to each other and like touch each other's fake boob and mm. we go what's up big homie? Doink doink. So it says to my big homie love big flea. How fabulous. <laughs> Sweet love it. I know. And so classy to open it that Right. I, well, for a while, I've been, I was forgetting it. And then I recently remembered mine. But then I got this one. And this one's like, you know, it's a beautiful one. I mean, Delta, before we read the letter, can we talk about the fact that they reopened a soup plantation in San Diego? And when are we going to go? I'm curious about it because it opened on July 4th. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, to, I wanted to rent a bus mm -hmm. and get people to go. I don't know anyone that's gone yet, but I'm curious because they say it's opened up inside a senior living complex. Fabulous. Even better. That is, I miss that more than anything. I, I loved love it. that place. Delta, I've got a purple Corolla. I'm going to honk, go. honk, pick you up in Long Beach, and we we'll should zip go. over. We should go. Uh, Jones I Broccoli Madness is waiting for is us. It's the I only hope. salad. The only. And I don't know if you're interested in this, but <laughs> the day that they started to do lockdowns two years ago, me and my friend Psychedella were going to Acapulco because they have the taco bar at of lunchtime. Course, of course. They got rid of it. And I just, she just texted me the other day at three o'clock in the morning. She was like, work, wake up. And I looked and I was like, oh my God, what's happening? And she's like, look at this. Acapulco is slowly introducing the taco bar for Sunday buffets. Mm. I'm so ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, Johnny. Okay, let's get to this. So I'm going to sit here and talk about food all day. I know, me too. Okay, from Jose, salutations to the iconic, elegant, and uber talented Delta Work yes. and our fabulous, glamorous, and esteemed Johnny McGovern. Oh, my name is Jose, and I hail from the city of Huntington Park, the land of quinceanera dresses, and Tam's chili cheese fries. I grew up in a traditional Mexican-American home that was wrapped in Catholicism, machismo, and the weight of being worth my parents' struggles of immigrating to a new country. I'm the oldest of four siblings, so I was expected to be the model sibling. I did everything my parents asked of me. I got good grades, two degrees, and a good-paying job with insurance. Mm. The only thing they weren't expecting of me was being gay. Mm. I always told myself that I'd come out to them once I was independent, fearing not being thrown out. Now that I've achieved this, I still have, I still have, I'm still in fear of being perceived as a failure. How was your coming out experience and how did your cultural background impact that in any way? Any advice? Thank you for your words of wisdom and experience. May life continue to bring both of you joy and success. Mm. What about you, Johnny? What was your family like when you came out? 
I was very lucky. My parents are hippies who met in the Peace Corps at their wedding. They acknowledged that their gay friends could not get married. So that was pretty amazing great to be able to come out in that way but i was still afraid of it i i came out to myself i knew i was gay in junior high i didn't come out to myself till midway through college and i went to acting school where everyone thought i was gay anyway Mm -hmm. but still i was like what do you mean do i want to play gay or straight parts i want to play straight of course and it wasn't until i moved to new york and i really was secure in myself that I told my parents and I told them because I want, I didn't want to pretend Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to not, I love them and I didn't want them to know a fake version of me. And to me, that's the most important reason to tell your parents because I'm fine for people not telling if that, if it's dangerous, especially young people, you can wait. But you know, as a grown up person, I think it's worth the risk because you do you want the person who brought you in this world? And if you have that kind of love relationship with your parents, I think you do want them to know the real you. Right. But of course you always, you know, depending on their feelings about homosexuality, that can be difficult. I get it. Uh But I think like it's worth the swing. Right. What do you think? Well, I think that um, I was just thinking about this and about like the the age that this person. uh, Because they're uh, grown. Because they're grown. Yeah. I mean, um, and then I'm thinking about you talking about having like parents that were hippies and and but then I also think about the similarities and the the how dissimilar many of us are um, in the way we present. Mm-hmm. So like if you if I feel like if somebody was just to walk in here, well, if they were to walk in here, they would know I'm in drag and you're not. But <laughs> what I mean is if we were wearing what we normally wear in a given day mm-hmm. and somebody was to come up to us, they might have to be expl- it might have to be explained to them. That you are not heterosexual Mm -hmm. because of just, and I don't think you're putting it on. I know you're not putting it on. This is how you talk. This is how you sound. This is how you walk. These are the things. And this is how, what I do. And I, even out of drag, it's pretty evident to people. They're like, oh, that guy is, you know, and so I have to find myself code switching sometimes. Uh I have to find myself. And I wonder, like, does that, are there people who just in daily life, you can get the feeling that they think like, oh, is, is that for your wife? Like at a store or something. Does that happen to you? Mm, I live in a pretty big gay bubble, but Mm -hmm. I do bro it out with straight guys all the time. Like, thanks, bro, whatever, bro. Just because I know that's how I can relate to them. Right. That's how I feel comfortable relating to them. It's definitely a defense mechanism that I've now seeped into my real life. Mm -hmm. But I just, I think because I'm so big, hairy, and scary Mm -hmm. that most people, you know, I wear a lot of gay stuff and act a lot of gay ways. Right. But because of the hairy and scariness, nobody's mentioning it. Right. (laughs) No, that I do I drive it. a purple Corolla Delta. Honk, honk. Did you have it painted that color? Of course. Grape soda purple. Grape soda purple. Mm-hmm. And wh- what kind of air freshener do you have inside, or do you use one? Uh, I put on whatever of those little Febreze little clip-ons that I can. See, I can't do those. I used to have cookies, Delta. I used to do cookie air freshener, Ooh. but it was just not believable. Like, at, at home, cookie air freshener, you could be like, you've just baked cookies. But right. But in a car, you're like... Did you just bake cookies in the glove compartment? You, it's not real. The thing with using a clip-on air freshener, though, is you have to decide. Do you want it to smell better in the car or smell quality, or do you want to block your air vent a little bit? Mm. And I can't block my air vent, so I have to use, like, I agree. anything that hangs. Uh-huh. But I have to switch them out every two days because, you know, I mean, come on, those Christmas tree ones, no, they, they don't last. They don't last. Girl, they do not last. Not even by a Yankee Candle. And what about this question, Delta? What are we going to – we didn't ever answer it. You answered it. Okay. Well, my my <laughs> advice was to come out to them. To I, take the risk. You're I don't a grown know how, person. I'm, I haven't come out yet. I haven't come out yet. I don't want the world to know. Um, <laughs> don't look closely, everyone. Don't look closely. I am not a homosexual. And certainly don't go by Hamburger Mary's Long Beach. At all. To see any <laughs> shows. And don't look closely at that beautiful lady in the poster. Okay, this is from Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Delta and Johnny. I watched mm. all of the drag race during the pandemic, and I'm so in love with the artistry and beauty that comes with drag. Mm. I told myself once the world opens up again, I would go to any drag shows I could find. I've been to a couple, and I have been having so much trouble feeling comfortable as I have social anxiety, and it feels very much like an audience participation thing. What do queens think about the quiet girl in the corner not participating? I'm, of course, tipping, but when someone comes to in 
the audience to dance with people, I want to dig a hole. I want to support local drag and get a better feel of it. Any tips on what I can do to be there but not participate or make queens uncomfortable with resting terror phase? Jenny, you are the person that we absolutely want at the show. There's not enough Jennies at the show. The person that needs to come to the show is the person that sits in the corner, quietly absorbs what's happening, is tipping, and doesn't get up and dance. That is what we absolutely do want. I don't know a lot of queens that that try to encourage people to take over the show with dancing. Personally, I mean, I, I don't like people getting up and doing all of that just because you are trying to do your number. And also it takes away from the experience that everybody else is trying to watch, which is the, the people that are on the flyer or the people that are in the show. So when somebody else gets up and is like, I'm going to bogart this show by dancing, it kind of sends a message to everyone that that person is more special than everybody else. And it's kind of hard to step away from that because you don't want to be rude to the person that maybe is having a good time. Maybe they just never get out. Um, I get being, uh, feeling socially awkward. It may seem like drag queens because they get in drag, they're excitable and they want to, they want to go out and, and, and uh, be seen by everybody. But honestly, when the drag comes off, like I, I'm, I have a lot of social anxiety myself. I don't go to a lot of places that, that don't involve me being in drag just because if people know me because of the drag and they don't see me in drag, that barrier is not there to create, to have carte blanche, to say whatever, to do whatever, to give sort of these finishes and this way of speaking because I'm a quiet person at home. So I know what that feels like. We want you and your personality at the show, Jenny. You're doing nothing wrong. You're doing everything right. You, by sitting and enjoying and letting us do what we're doing, is exactly what we need. And you've seen these shows. The I mean, perfect audience member. A quiet person who doesn't want to pull focus right. and tips. You're doing well, darling. You're you're in the right place. We have enough stars in the cast. Yeah. We don't need an audience stars yeah. also. And if somebody does pull you up on stage, I mean, not you, Jenny, because, you know, sit in the back. They're not going to bother you. But they usually go for the people towards the front. If they do, you know, if you're somebody that does get pulled up, just you know, behave. Keep your hands inside the ride at all times. We say it before, mm -hmm. and I'll say it again. Um, thank you, Johnny, Baby, for being I've here. I've been dying to come on the show. I love listening. You're doing such a great job. It's so fun, and you know what? It it this. I'm telling. You, I tell everybody it blows by so fast because we sit, start talking about one thing, and then it just it's like it's done. You know what I mean? Uh, thank you all so much for listening to Very Delta, and a special hello to everyone watching the Mom Podcast's YouTube channel. Very Delta comes out every Monday right here on the Very That Podcast feed and on YouTube. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe to ensure that you do not miss an episode. And if you'd like to send me a question, a comment, or any type of communication, email me at readmedelta at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. And where can we find you on social media? Well, I do my own podcast. I, You know, I started my podcast in 2006, Delta. Uh, way before any of us were doing this. <laughs> yeah, like once again, 10 years early to everything. But I can, I'm can. i now doing it exclusively on Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com slash gayest of all time, I'm podcasting up to three times a week. We talk uh, about gay stuff, pop culture, drag, uh, sex, all of it. And if you listen to my podcast over the last... 10, 15 years, all my close friends, Eric Couture, Adam Joseph, all the rest, they still do them with me. So Why do you have so much to say? How do you do that? I've been doing it for a long time. And you know what? I use it as an opportunity to socialize with my friends. We've been doing podcasts together for like 15 years. Yeah. So what way, what other way do you have a great long conversation about so many things with your friends? Yeah, like especially at a gig too. Like yeah. people are like, yes, do we only hang out at gigs? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and like yeah, I find that it, it's it's great social time and, you know, the audience has been with me for so long. So join me, patreon.com slash gayest of all time. Bing. Love it. We'll see you next week. Mwah. So fun. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom, hosted by Delta Work and produced by Maxwell Esposito. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing and sound design by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio.